raise your hands and raise your voice and speak it out. Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Let your sickness hear that you cannot stand the Lord Almighty. Let weakness hear you. Just go ahead and speak. Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Let something hear. Let something know. Let something feel. Let the enemy know that he cannot stand the Lord Almighty. Let principalities and powers feel that they cannot stand the Lord Almighty. Open your mouth sir, and speak. Who is it that can stand the Lord Almighty? Who is it that can stand the King Almighty? Who is it that can stand the Almighty? Who is it that can stand the faithful Almighty? The glorious Almighty. Who is it that can stand the Almighty? Tell me of principalities. Tell me of powers. Tell me of kingdoms that can stand the Lord Almighty. Who is it that can stand the Lord Almighty? Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Announce it abroad. Announce it abroad. Announce it in high places. Announce it in low places. Announce it in deep places. Announce it in mighty places. Announce it in, in beautiful places, in ugly places. Announce it in dark places. Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Make it more, make it more, make it more in loudness, make it more in fierceness, make it more in power. Speak like it depends on you. Speak to foundations, speak to the elementary spirits, speak to the elements, speak to nature, speak to kingdom. Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Talk about it every time, everywhere. Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Who can withstand the Lord Almighty? Who can fight the Lord Almighty? Who can struggle against the Lord Almighty? Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Thank you, Father. Thank you, the revealer of secrets. Thank you, the giver of wisdom. Thank you, the teacher of mysteries. Thank you, the father of humanity. Thank you, the beginning of time. Thank you, the creator of eternity. Thank you, the generator of temporality. Thank you, our beauty. Thank you, our prosperity. Thank you, our dignity. Thank you, the one who turns darkness into light. Thank you, the one who raised the dead and the one who raised the sun. Thank you, the one who is awe in awesomeness. The one who is might in mightiness. The one who is glory in gloriousness. The one who is beauty in beautifulness. The form in glory. The power in power. The glory in glory. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, celebrate. Sir. Who will stand the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stand the Lord? Let me hear you. Who can stand the Lord Almighty? Oh, no one. Who can stand the Lord? No one. Who can stand the Lord? And who can stand the Lord? And who can?
can stop the Lord? And who can change the Lord? Who can keep the Lord? And who can stand the Lord? And who can stop the Lord Almighty? Thank you, Father. Celebrate and clap yourself. Maybe seated, maybe seated. Welcome to the Rising Stars Assembly of GFCC. Welcome to the place where God turns ordinary people into rising champions. I hope in the last week, in the previous week, you had risen early. Today I come with an intentionality to prophesy into your life that you will rise early. You will become early. You will be lifted early. The way you say amen is like I am cursing you that you should not be lifted early. You will prosper early. You will bear fruit early. You will touch wonder early. You will experience power early. You will see glory early. And you will advance early. In the name of Jesus, you will prosper early. The singles will marry early. And their wombs will carry children early. And they will be wealthy early. You will build ministries early. You will build businesses early. And you will expand early. But you cannot die early. And I say you cannot die early. You will last long and live long and prosper forever. But every rising will be early. Lift up your two hands and say, I am early riser. I am lifted early. Now turn those prophecies into your own personal confession. Speak over your children. My children rise early. My children mature early. My children are done with the issues that keep young people for too long. They are done early. My children are lifted early. They graduate early. They find employment early. They build businesses early. I speak into this assembly the grace to rise early. The grace to increase early. I speak into this assembly the pressure to be promoted early. The grace to expand early. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, be seated. So, you, rising early is not even a Sunday thing. Rising early is a life thing. Anybody on earth who is making impact is an early riser. In the secular world, there is a man I have been following for many years. Many years. Robin Sharma is not a Christian. I think he's of Indian origin. I stumbled upon his book, a couple of his books several years ago. I've been a searcher, a searcher of wisdom. I've been a searcher of wisdom. So, a lot of books I've read are not spiritual books. Sorry about that. Read spiritual books, read spiritual books. <laughs> but I have to confess, a lot of books that I've read in life and I'm still planning to read, they are not spiritual books. I 
By the grace of God, I have the gift of the Holy Ghost. I enjoy revelation. Now and again, God gives me people in the spiritual space who inspire me and add to my knowledge. But I pay attention to what God is speaking to me. I'm careful. I'm careful to know where God is taking me to in the spiritual place. And I can only take from what God permits me to that. That will further where he's taking me to. And the vision is given me. But I glean wisdom from the, the space of the world. I glean, I take wisdom, I try to learn how the men who are inspiring the world in the secular, non-Christian space, how are they doing it? Because the grace that we have received in Christ, primarily, 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 is to be God's ambassadors here. God's representative here on earth. So you must know how to prosper on earth. If after you speak in tongues, you see visions, you know everything about God. And you are hopeless here. You are useless here. I'm not sure we will share the same space in heaven. As I woke up this morning in my meditation, it became very clear again. It's one of the clearest things that I've enjoyed in my mind. That we were, we are saved to build God's kingdom on earth. In heaven, you will be useless. You will not add any value to heaven. Any preacher that has ever preached to you differently, you go and challenge. I say, I, I say, I send you back to correct his mind. Our salvation, our salvation will add no value to heaven. When you go to heaven, heaven will not be brighter because you have come. The space in heaven, the gold will not be more golden because you have arrived in heaven. You add nothing to the equation of heaven. By the way, man was not made for heaven. Go and read Genesis. And on the last, in the very last thing is that the new and heavenly Jerusalem will come down. Say down. Down is where God's kingdom is to be erected. So you are saved to reveal and build the structures of God here. That's why God is passionate about success. That's why you hear the, the parable of the talents. That the one that had more more was given. The one that had nothing, he said, take it from him. So that was not heaven on earth. So all the gifts, all the opportunities, being a student gives you opportunity to reveal God's kingdom, God's rulership and authority here. That's it. So I have been interested in having known, having had the Christ in me. I have to story how does it work on earth? So on earth, people rise early. When Jesus Christ came on earth, he will rise early to go and pray. In heaven, he does not need to rise early because there is no sleeping in heaven. But when Jesus Christ came on earth, he learned to rise early. To meet his father. Whatever is important to you makes you rise early. So when I've been talking to you about rising early, it's not about coming to comfort me. Because I'm comfortless in church. I am lonely and depressed. So you come early to tell me, no, 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 that's not it. That's not it. It is about the logic of how it works on earth. Logic of how it works on earth. And this message is more important to you in Uyo than those in Lagos. Those in Lagos, they come back from work late and rise early to go out. That's why they prosper more. Here in you go 10 a.m. Some shops are not open. You will go and wait for somebody, somebody who is poor, whose father was poor, whose children are likely to be poor. And the person will come and does not apologize to you. And comes, it will take 20 minutes to unlock the first part lock. And walks like nothing is at stake. Is a cursed spirit. So when God said, go home, your people need you. You're a missionary to your people. Sir, I have, I have something in my mouth to insult you until that spirit leaves you. 
Even when I come, I come like I want to be very humble and orderly today. When I see your face, I get angry. Because you need to become a light. The scripture says you are the light of the world. You know what? When you are saved, you, light is standard. So just like saying you are the standard of the world. What is standard? Reference point. People measure things not by darkness but by light. Light is success. Success is light. Failure is darkness. You see, you are the light of the world. You didn't say you are the light of heaven. Heaven needs no light. You are the success of the world. That means you should be the first generation of those who are uncomfortable with the issues of doing things carelessly and late. Doing things late. Doing things late. Beginning late. So you see people, you see people, you see children that, that in some places, these children, they have already gone far in life and we count our ages down. At 30, you think you are not ready to rule the world. And people in political space in Nigeria, we make, look at what is happening. Where is it in Senegal? In Senegal. And these are places that should learn from Nigeria. As a Nigerian, when you go to Senegal, Senegal is the look unto you. Every Nigerian in any space in Africa, except, except some parts of Africa, they look unto you as a standard. Even in other places that are advanced and even ahead of us, they look at us as a threat. Go to Egypt. Go to South Africa. What is the whole thing about South Africans being so hateful of Nigerians? Because you are a threat. So, my interest, I want, one of the things I want to succeed in doing it's that those who come into my space, I put pressure on you. It is, you are, you are ready to go. You are ready to rule. You are ready to rule. You are ready to be in charge. You are ready to build business. You are ready to manage. You are ready to direct. You are ready to lead. You are already late. The best time to, to have led was yesterday. Yesterday could be years back. The next best time is now a Chinese proverb. The best time to plant a seed was yes, to plant a tree was yesterday. The next best time to plant a tree, not tomorrow. Now. So you rise. You rise early. You rise early. In order to, in order to catch up, in order to make impact, rise early. So I was talking about Robin Sharma. 5 a.m. club is a global movement. 5 a.m. club, global movement. And me, I will be laughing. I say 5 a.m. is not even early. 5 a.m. is not early. 5 a.m. is when I'm on holiday, when I'm trying to recover. And so you, you are awake, but you don't want to do anything. You just want to just take it easy. The normal, my normal writing should be from 2 a.m. That is normal. If I want to say, okay, I'm into activity, that means you can rise earlier. And then you now snack, you know, sleep snack. If you have a few minutes later, you now sleep snack. Or snacks, or snack, sleep. A couple of minutes and then you rise up. 2 a.m. So what do you talk about 5 a.m.? I just be saying, Robin, it's okay, you guys, you know, we are more elevated. Sir, we are the, the, we are the light of this world. I hold you accountable. Sir, if you fail after meeting me, that the angels will beat you while you are still walking around. So don't be surprised that there will be invisible hands slapping you because you fail. This week, if you don't show up in any assignment you are given earlier, any appointments you have this week, you have to go and wait for whoever you are meeting. You are meeting with a superior, show up, sit down and prepare. You are meeting with somebody under you, show up early and teach that person 
knowledge because you are the light of the world. Am I communicating? Show up. Tell somebody, show up early. Sir, if you show up early, you will rise up early. My brother is a, gen is a retired general in the army. We, we talked about, we, there was a time, I think he was resuming duty as a major general in a very serious army, army center, very serious place. He was resuming. So he was planning meeting. And we were tired. And we just needed to cash up some rest. And he set a meeting and talked about at this point, we'll be at this point. He said, what time is the meeting? He said, the best strategy in life is arrive early and wait for who is coming. That that is number one thing. In safety and security, master your environment and wait for who comes. That means whoever comes after you is coming into your space. You have advantage. That's how you fail interview because you arrive in a hurry. Arrive late and everything, your mind is upside down. That's why you fail exams. Because when you arrive late in examination, it's 50% failure. You are confused. It will now take you one. If the exam is one hour, 30 minutes you are using to recall yourself and control yourself. And you say it's a witch from your family. You are the witch from your family. I'm angry. But I love you. I came to prophesy to you from today. There is pressure on you to rise early. Amen. Angels will come and announce to me. So next week I will give you feedback. Angels will come and speak to me about how you go about this week. And on Sunday I will see you. We will see how early you arise. Some of you I forbid. Some of you God will never allow me to wed you. Because I don't want to make donation to a future that does not have seriousness. I'm sure you know I'm not in a hurry to wed people. I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm not, you can go and marry in your father's church. Come, let me teach you. But if I wed you, I want to make contribution and be partnership to what is substantial and glorious. So I'm not ready to wed fools. Fools who will raise fools. And they say, who wedded you? And you mention the name of a person that should be a fool, but I'm not. Lift up your two hands. I'm going to wed you, but you will not be a fool. Lift up your two hands. <laughs> if you say I insult you, rise early. Just rise early. After that, you can come for my apologies, but you must rise early first. Praise God. I will apologize to you after you have risen early consistently for three years and your life will have taken up. Then you come, let me apologize to you. And come with a seat in your hand for me to apologize. Lift up your two hands. I speak that you, even this week, every assignment, success will be early. Promotion will be early. You cannot be pastored by me and you have carry over. Say I have additional one year in uh, additional one year in school. Who, who and then we give man who saw, then we give man who car. Who who gave birth to you? If I pastor you, you should be a partner to lecturers. They should be so disappointed that you are not in class because you make it easy for them. Sir, the whole thing is not about brain. Brain is good enough. It's the development of the brain. Every brain is glorious. It's beautiful. Except someone who is sick and none of you is sick. What, what happens to our brain is about development. The extent to which the best of human geniuses have not developed 10% of their brain. So you can, you can do anything and go anywhere. The only limit is your mind and your permission to allow your brain to work. Raise your hand. In the name of Jesus, you are the light of this world. You are the light of this culture of failure that we have been planted. I'm not, I used to be so angry that God sent me to a choir boom said, I have told you that I didn't like my call. Didn't like my call because I came from a place that challenged me and I just come to a place that any little thing you do, people feel threatened by you, including those who ordain you. Including those who, who, who you look onto, 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 you look onto for mentorship, mentorship, they, they, they feel threatened by you. And you just feel like, what is this? Is a cultural thing. 
You can be so born again, you can be so ordained, you can be an archbishop or a cardinal, and yet you are small in the mind. Small in the mind. But now I know why God sent me here. He has given me grace to insult those who feel they are important. And they are angry with me, but they will never forget what I told them. And if they tell their children in the future, the children will tell you, Daddy, that's the person you needed. If you stayed there, our lives will have been better. Lift up your two hands. Your children will not correct your error. You are the correction of this world. Amen. I didn't hear you. I said you are the correction of this world. Amen. You are the blessing of this world in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Be seated. I'm excited to harass you this morning. Let's go straight to the resurrection story. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to you. Glory to you. So today we're talking about the resurrection as a reward. In the Champions Family Assembly, I had thought that let, last week I would teach on the resurrection as reward. Last week I taught, I taught you on resurrection as proof, right? So resurrection as reward was to be for the next service. But the Holy Spirit just said, oh, let me just give it to them. So let's talk about resurrection as reward. By the way, resurrection I've been telling you is anastasis. Say anastasis. I didn't hear you. Say Anna. This Anna is not H-O. It's not H-A. It's A-N-A. Anna. 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 Anastasis. The most important thing in the resurrection is Anna. Anna means up. Say up. That's it. Up. Up, up, up. Can teach on resurrection for one year. Anastasis. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ came as the reward that the Father gave to him. In the next service, I'm just still going to be, I may just be talking about the resurrection as reward, but from a different perspective. From a different perspective. But let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. So the resurrection of Jesus was the reward that the Father gave to the Son for taking on flesh, which is incarnation. Incarnation. Kana. When you hear of Kana, is Kana. Kana is flesh. Incarnation means in the flesh. That the Word of God came in the flesh. That's what we call incarnation. John chapter 1 verse 4. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and did what? Dwelt amongst us. That's the incarnation. For taking on the flesh and coming in the flesh and then crucifixion for being murdered, killed brutally, publicly, shamefully. And doing that not because of anything of his own that he needed or that he deserved. He did that just for me and for you, which is what in theology we call the doctrine of substitution. Substitution. That the, the innocent took the place of the guilty so that the guilty can walk away innocent. That is why the scripture says we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So when you are a child of God, you don't just have righteousness. You are the righteousness. You are the evidence of the righteousness. Why? Because you have taken on the righteousness of Christ while he took on your guilt. So the high point of Christian experience in understanding is substitution. So that is, that is my meditation every day. The greatest thing I do in prayer is not speaking in tongues. The greatest thing I do in prayer is meditation, remembrance, and speaking to my life, and speaking to the whole world, announcing in the mind, in the spirit, in, uh, unto, until I begin then to speak out who I am. It's the greatest thing, it's the greatest thing. I pray that God will, God will help you to understand what meditation is and will teach you meditation. Maybe sometime, you know, the reason why we have not been able to teach basic things is because you are not yet ready in many areas. So when I come, I spend the time I should use to teach you. I spend that time to harass you, to, 
to, to even be alive. It's okay. You are getting better. You are rising early. Are you not rising early? So I wake up in the morning and I sit down and I, and I, I speak to me. My mind comes alive as a substitute of God's son. So when he took flesh, it was my flesh that was at stake. He didn't need flesh. When he died, he didn't need to die. He died my death. My death carried, his death carried my name. If you understand that the, the Jewish authority asked for the release of Barabbas. Because it was traditional that at every feast of the Passover, a criminal, a condemned criminal will be released to the Jews. A condemned criminal that was a Jew will be released to the Jews in order to appease them, to make them feel good. Because the governor, that king, was very evil and the Jews did not like him. So he looked for ways of befriending. And in this case, Jesus, who was not guilty, had every reason to be released. But they asked for Barabbas. And they said Barabbas was an insurrectionist. A rebel. A murderer. Because of the rebellion that he led, people died. So he was a condemned man who had no reason walking free. But Jesus took his place and said, do you know who I am? I am Barabbas as Patrick. You are, if you are saved, you are the Barabbas. A murderer had to go free for the innocent to take his place. And the murderer went free on the bill of the innocent. So he became the innocence of the Son of God. The proof, he wore the innocence of the Son of God. While the Son of God wore his guilt and died his death. He wore the innocence of the Son of God and lived his life. So this life I live is not the life that Mark Teresa brought forth. It's not the life that Atatu brought forth. Those are my parents. This life is the life of the Son of God. I am dressed in his righteousness. I'm dressed in his holiness. I'm dressed in his value. Sir, I am round in the sun. Sir, I am aged in the sun. Sir, I, I, you, physically you say I'm 55 years. This is okay. It's lovable. But sir, spiritually, I am aged in the sun. So things of time don't have opportunity, don't have reason to hold me. Because like Jesus, I can say, before you were witches, I, I am. So my age is the age of the son. Because the son of God took my age and died early because that was my fate. But he's the one who is immortal, eternal. So I live immortal life, I live eternal life. So the resurrection of the son, he didn't need resurrection. I needed resurrection because he didn't need to die. It is the one who had reason to go down who will now have reason to rise the one who has always been up does not need resurrection because resurrection is up after fall up after death up after sickness up after failure up after shame the one who knew no shame or had no shame had no reason to be up after because he has always been up but it's Patrick that had reason to be up after rubbish, up after the uselessness, up after. So he took my flesh, he took flesh for my sake. In this, in this grand plan of substitution, and he died my death. My death, his death carried my signature and my name, my nomenclature, my ancestry, everything of humanity concerning me was born in his death and he handed over the life of eternity make me a citizen of eternity and I live immortal life in mortality I live eternal life in temporality because of that the limits of time don't have authority to hold me why? I live through the sun a glory to God what can hold the sun is what should hold me so walls that wouldn't hold the sun I walk right into the wall and walk across the wall and, and the walls and other walls will say but men don't walk through walls I say I'm not man I'm God, I'm God man I'm just trying to let you understand resurrection you cannot understand resurrection and, and cancer will kill you 
Because you have a destiny to be up. Cancer is to bring you down. Brings down everything in you. And eventually buries you. But you are the reason one in Christ. Your destiny is up. Shout up. Glory. Rise and say up. Say I rise up. I prosper up. I increase up. After shame I'm up. After all those times I am up. I am back up in glory. I am back up in wonder. I am back up in mystery. I am back up in health. I am back up in holiness. Say my destiny is up. So you have to have a resurrection mentality. Maybe next week I may just talk to you about a resurrection mentality. <laughs> ministers, my ministers, hold me accountable. Let's talk. We can talk about resurrection mentality next week. Be seated. Be seated. Are you going to die? Are you going to fail? You have opportunity to be up. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5 to 11. Let's look at the reward that the Father bestowed on the Son for, to, for taking flesh on my account. Dying death. That, is, that was mine. And rising in the resurrection that was meant for me. An ascension that has taken me to sit with him in the heavenly places at the right hand of the Father, far above principalities and power. I find time and take, teach you the scripture. Everything Jesus is above in the heavenly places, you are above while on earth. Everything that bows down to him, bows down to you. If you understand this mystery of substitution, that he, he bore you and you are bearing the son, you are living through the sun. That's how you escape sickness and diseases. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11. As I'm speaking, something has left somebody. Yeah. Whether it's a foul spirit, an unholy desire that holds you captive, you are up again. Yeah. Something that breaks you and depresses you. Something that breaks you and depresses you has left you. Why? Because you are up again. That's a destiny. It's not on account of your works. If it is your works, then we are not talking about Jesus. If it is grace, then it is Jesus. Grace means it comes to you free. All you need to do is to believe and enjoy it. Glory to God. Say glory to God. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Who? Being in the form of God did not consider a robbery to be equal with God. This is the whole thing. And I don't have the time to teach. Because we could talk about the eternal plan that the world will become flesh. As the plan B and plan perfection. If something will go wrong with the first creation. And something did go wrong with the first creation and the plan of salvation was activated and the plan of salvation was that it will come a time that the one who had been from all eternity God one with God same as God equal with God in glory and power and, and a glorious nature will step down and will no longer consider it a matter of right to hold on to equality with the father but on my account will step down it is only the one who steps down that can go up so this was the plan this scripture is, is referring to pre-temporal time pre pre cosmos time pre-earthly time the time in eternity when an arrangement has been built, that is what the scripture is talking about in the, book, in the book of Revelation. The lamb that was slain from the foundation. That means from the foundation before Adam became Adam, before Eve became Eve, before the, before the disorder, even before the devil 
before Satan, before that, that being that was cast out, the mystery of redemption had been put in place. And it was just as a matter of time, if something will happen that will necessitate it, God does not lack options in every situation. If one option goes awry, if there is oh, the activation automatically, no, automatically. <laughs> Glory to God, I'm excited. The scripture can say, my enemies do not gloat at me for when I fall. If I fall, I will honor the up again. <laughs> so the devil has no reason to rejoice over me. That I am weak should not make the kingdom of hell rejoice. Because they have seen me weak and weak and weak and weak and weak again. But then, before they come close, Anna, up. So the devil does not celebrate in my, in my downness. Because he knows, eh. <laughs> that is the life of Christ. Has natural tendency to be up. The life of Christ has... Not, has gravitational tendency <laughs> a gravitational pull up glory to God glory to God <clears throat> I'm excited glory let this mind be in you which was also in Christ as a result of which being in the form of God did not consider a robbery to be equal with God NIV puts that verse 6 a little bit better for me in terms of comprehension. Say, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grabs. If you study the Greek word that is translated grabs, it means to be forcefully held onto. A paso, to be, to be snatched. A paso is a violent taking, snatching. So the mind that we are talking about is a mind that will let you let go certain things and not hold on to it violently. It's my own, it's my own, it's my own. He did not hold, there was no argument. I, 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 am, I am immortal, I am, I am, I am the word and the, was with God and was God. So there's no reason to step down. He let it go. When he let it go because he saw me. He let it go because he thought about me. So crucifixion was already in the incarnation. Shame was already in becoming flesh. That is why he was born in a manger. The poorest amongst, here, amongst us here was not born in a manger. The poorest. Even those who were born in Usumurua. Usumurua. Have you heard of Usumurua? Or Iwang? I'm sorry. There's one in Iwang here. I'm sorry. And to read them, and to read them, to read them. It was not poverty. It was just an accident, an accident of the, of birth, but not poverty. But Jesus, the Majesty of God, the Word of God, the, through whom all things were made, and without whom nothing came to be that was. Out of the design that I would be elevated from the rubbish. From the ruins and the rubbles of poverty and hopelessness, he came down in the flesh. Oh my goodness, I just, 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 just I'm excited. <laughs> who being in the very form, who give me that in NIV, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be held onto, something to be, to be held onto, but make himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, in appearance as a man, he humbled himself still and became obedient to what? Obeyed to death. He did not obey to a point, he obeyed all the way. Why? He was born to die. If he will not die, it will be mission aborted. And I will still be what the ancestors gave. I will still be the pre-arranged failure of the devil through Adam. But thank God there is Anna 
rising from the uselessness of the past and letting go of the crocro of rebellion. Glory to God. Became obedient to death, not just death. Complete it for me. Come on. Complete it. Just complete it. Speak it early now. Now the next verse is an announcement. I love the next verse. Therefore, when you, you see the word therefore is consequence. What follows as a result naturally? What is expected? Implication. Therefore is implication. What was contained in what we, what we have been talking about that we did not see. <laughs> Therefore, Stephen Alcovey talks about picking, if you pick one end of the stick, you also pick the other end of the stick. <laughs> so you cannot do things and not take responsibility and not expect consequences. That is how things are. If you pick one end of the stick, you have taken ownership of the other end. If something is electrocuted and you touch that one side of it, whatever it is on the other side is part of your life. <laughs> Glory to God. So therefore, because he had touched all of this, touched the decision to become flesh, touched the decision to die, to see the shame that was mine, because he saw all of that, because he went through all of that, therefore, shout therefore, Therefore, so we are now talking about reward. Reward is what comes as therefore. You stood under the rain and did the hard work. Therefore, as a result of that, consequently, as a result, the reward, whether it's negative reward, stood, stood under the rain, exposed your body. Therefore, the cold the pneumonia, pneumonia and whatever it was. You stood under the rain and did the hard work. Therefore, you are elevated and paid double. Therefore, everything has consequence. Everything has consequence. Everything does. Therefore, God exalted him. That's the resurrection. Anna, God took him up again. And that, that was part of what we dealt with last week as proof. So it's rising again was the proof that it was Christ. The proof of God's faithfulness. The proof of God's faithfulness was in the resurrection of the Son. The first time people saw the Father's action in the life of the Son that can never be doubted forever is that he raised him up. For death could not hold him captive. So when he gave his life, he knew the father would raise him. The arrangement was that he would, he said, I lay down and I take it up. Take it up. In the father and with the father. By the father and for the father. Therefore he was exalted. See, now we have entered into the realm of the reward. He was exalted. He exalted him to the highest place. And in this reward, the first step of the reward is being lifted above all things, the highest place, above angels. Now, before now, he had been above all things. But when the scripture says he's been exalted, this is still about us. If he did not die for us, his exaltation, his eternal exaltation had no, no power over me. I don't know where I'm communicating. When Adam and Eve sinned, God was still merciful and they were naked. God was almighty and they were defeated. They say, we heard, we heard, we heard, we heard you coming and we were afraid and we hid ourselves. He was already exalted. He was above all things. He did not help them. But because his coming was for us, his death was for me. Therefore, this exaltation is me. It's you. 
It's not like exalting him to where he has never been before. But this time around, he's being exalted at the resurrection, after the resurrection, now has implication upon the earth. He has always been with the Father. The scripture says in John chapter 1 from verse 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was what? God, that is exaltation. He was not less. And it's now, now, now it's not exalted above God, above the Father. But the point is that as long as he did not come down, his exaltation will not affect those who are down. Oh, come on. Come on, I, I will break this microphone. Do you have another one? How dare you not understand? Glory to God. I say glory to God. So before he became flesh, he had been exalted. The psalm, the Old Testament talks about it all the time. Be thou exalted above the heavens and let your glory be above. So his exaltation is a, is a given, is eternal, already there. But his coming down was for me. His fleshness for me. His death for me. His resurrection for me. The reward of the resurrection is for me. If the reason of the crucifixion was about me and me, then the reason and the implication of the resurrection is not about him. It's about me. Glory to God. Stand up and just, if you, if you want to dance without the music, I don't even know whether you know what is good news. Let me close my eyes. But just show joy in whatever way. I don't know whatever it is. Just celebrate. Say all of this is for me. Which is what the scripture says that even angels long. Angels long to look into these things. Angels long to look into the, the thing that will make God come down for me. That will make God die for me. That will make God rise for me. I will make God exalted for me. I will make God rewarded for me. I am the bearer of the reward. I am the carrier of the reward. I am the owner of the reward. I am the beneficiary of the world. The reward. I am the carrier. I am the liver. Is there anything like liver? I am the one living the reward. I am the one enjoying the reward. I am the one talking the reward. The devil knows the reward is mine. Which is a way that they know the resurrection is mine. If the death is mine, the resurrection is mine. The exaltation is mine. The glorification is mine. Ah! It is mine. It is for me. It is for my children. It is for my generation. It is for my wife, my children, and their children, and their children, to the generation, and to generation, to eternity, and the eternal. May these blessings be upon you from generation to generation in your going in your coming I saw you it's for you I don't care how you make it look like it's for me he didn't have to die he died my death he didn't have to rise he rose in my rising he did, I needed to die I needed to rise I need a reward. He did not need the reward. The reward carried my name because the flesh was looking for me and the dead carried my signature, carried my passport and nomenclature, carried my ancestry, my location, my connection. Therefore, this whole therefore thing is for me. Therefore, this exalted thing about him is for me. Therefore, this exaltation thing is for me. This glory thing is mine. Glory is mine. Salvation is mine. 
Resilience is mine. Rank is mine. Edge in the heaven is mine. Power is mine. Wonder is mine. Glory is mine. Victory is mine. Wisdom is mine. Honor is mine. Yes, it's mine. Rakatata. That is my forgiveness. That is my restoration. That is my rejuvenation. That is my anastasis. My standing up. My standing up. My standing up. My rising up. My being lifted up. My being honored. That is my Anastasis. It's mine. Christ is for me. Jesus is for me. Because of that I am son. I carry the identity card of the son. I carry the name of the son. In every border in the heavenly places. I can cross from Cambodia to Oceania with the passport of the sun. I can cross from sickness to wealth with the passport of the sun. I carry his identity card. I carry his welfare number. I carry his security number. I carry his bank account details. I carry his medical, medical details. I carry his history. I am the one who did what he did because he did it on my behalf. I am the one who carried the cross because he carried it for me. I am the one who died because he died for me. I am the one who rose because he rose, he rose for me. I am the one. Therefore, wombs are open, cancer is healed, and somebody is exempted from death. This is how you escape death. This is how the snare has been broken, and your souls, like birds, have escaped. Why? Because your help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. This is how gates are lifted. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting door. Why? The king of glory. And the psalmist will dare ask, principalities will ask, cancer will ask, who is this king of glory? Because I see your face. Who is this king of glory? I know your father's name. Who is this king of glory? I know where you come from. Who is this king of glory? I know your history. Who is this king of glory? That is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. I am the carrier of his strength. I am the carrier, the exhibit of his might. I am the proof that he died and rose. Check me out. I carry his name because of You cannot fail. No. You cannot know this and no failure. You cannot know this and no shame. You cannot know this and no decay. You cannot know this and no destruction. You cannot know this and no damnation. You cannot know this and no weakness. You cannot know this and no barrier. Stuffs here. Glory to 
God. Therefore, the Father raised him up. Get it. Are you ready for this one? Tell me you are ready for the next one. Because it's going to get a little bit more rowdy. <laughs> Tell me you are ready for the next one. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Next verse, see, see. Gave him a name. How many times? Jesus Christ had been given the name three times. While he was still in the womb, the angels say you shall call him Jesus. When he was born, he was named Jesus. And as a reward for his suffering, the father gave him the name Jesus. So Jesus was the one that was coming. And when he was named, Jesus was the one that had come. And when he was exalted, it means Jesus is coming. Be careful, Jesus is coming. It's not done yet. Now let me explain it to you. He's given the name three times at his incarnation. He came into flesh. He said the one that has come into flesh is Jesus. He was born. They, they gave him the name that the angel had given. That's what the scripture records. And everybody would think that was all. No. The first one was anticipation, expectation. The second one was prophetic declaration. Both of them have the same. Prophetic declaration before his birth. An announcement that it is done at his birth. Jesus has come. And then the next one is a futuristic. Means for as long as the earth lasts, Jesus will come again. Now, let me tell you about the coming of Jesus that you know. The coming of Jesus that you know is the, that on the last day, he will come at the trumpet blast with all the powers in all his glory. That's the final. But the one that his death brought about is that they gave him the name Jesus. The father gave him the name Jesus. See the implication. That are the name. No, 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 no. Go to verse 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him what? The name that is what? Above. Therefore, he's being above before he came, now becomes our experience. I told you, as long as he remained above and did not come in the flesh, it will not, it will not affect me. The devil will still do room around the earth and there will be no serious intervention. Any intervention will just be what God did in the Old Testament. Victory in war. But there will not be a transmutation of a useless creature that had fallen in Adam into the resplendence of the sun to the status of the sun to be the rulership of the earth to be God's governance and administration on earth therefore this third time therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that corresponds to that highest place next verse that read this one with me everyone that now this is his coming that I'm talking about. Every day in every family, when someone who understands this mystery says, in the name of Jesus Christ, that means he has come into the situation. 20 years from now, he's still coming. 100 years from now, come on, come on, come. So, the Father gave him a future for humanity. That means in every generation. Now, the same Jesus that Paul used is the Jesus that I used. At the time of Paul, somebody would think that was all. But it's still coming. So that means is the, the coming of Jesus until he finally comes. He comes into a hopeless home hope and gives hope. He comes into a hopeless womb and gives hope. He comes into a useless situation and brings forth use. He comes into a helpless situation and brings help. 
He comes into darkness and announce light. He is coming to your weakness. He is coming. That means at, at the name of Jesus, every knee. The scripture didn't say every knee has bowed. If the scripture says every knee has bowed, it means it's completed. It means tomorrow it is gone. And all of that, because it's already done, it's a will. So in this case, it will. After this one, the next one, you are sure he will. Oh, come on, 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 talk to me, talk to me. After 10 years, he will. Then it will be the bowing. Why? The father has exalted him. That means every Tuesday looks like Anastasis. I rise on Tuesday because he will. Now, before you rejoice, be seated. Let's settle it. I'm done. Before you rejoice, what is the meaning of Jesus? What is the meaning of Jesus? I have taught you a couple of things about Jesus. The word Jesus is originally from Hebrew, Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua means Yahweh saves. Jehovah delivers. God rescues. God heals. Everything that is salvation, God does it. So Jesus means Joshua. Joshua means God saves. God delivers. That's it. That Yeshua told you when the the, the Septuagint came. The Septuagint means the rabbi. It's a 70 rabbi, according to legion, who went about the translation of the Old Testament in, in Hebrew into Greek version. Because the Jews had been dispersed into the world. And the Jews who were in Alexandra, Alexandra became the cultural headquarters, so to say, or the headquarters of Greek empire outside Greece. Alexandria, named after Alexander the Great, when he came and conquered the north of Africa. And Alexander was built as a city in commemoration of him. And it became where the, end, the early, the early known Egyptian pharaohs, the Ptolemaic, and all of that, the Greeks who began to rule and Greek language and culture became the culture of the civilized world. And so the Jews that are gathered is, is in Alexander. You have one of the, the first universities of the world. And so the Jews who were, who were Hellenists, Hellenists, the word Helen means Greece or Greek. Helen, Helen. So Hellenists are of Greek or of Greece, whatever it is. So the Jews that were Hellenists that were of Greek culture, the Jews that were of Greek language, they needed the Bible in the language that was the currency in language of the time. So the Bible was in Hebrew translated into Greek. That's what is called the Septuagint, referring to the 70 or so, according to legion, legion the 70 scribes, scholars, who translated this. And then they use Greek word to render certain Hebrew words. And the word that they use in Greek to render Yeshua is Jesus. It's from that Jesus in Greek and Latin that we have Jesus in English. So Jesus is Yeshua. Jesus is Joshua. Jesus means God saves. So when the father raised him up, he gave him the highest gift. Give him a name that is above every name, which means when there is a problem, the highest thing is that God will save. And every principality that says this one will not be saved. So when Jesus is involved, it means it's a name that is above the name of that principality. And every knee will then do what? Bah. That's the continuity of Jesus. So when the father gave him the name, he didn't need the name. I needed the name. 
Because principality will not dare him. But principality will dare you. No oh, glory to God. So the name was given. Yeshua as a promise, as a prophecy. That means when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know God will save. And I fear no evil. When the devil says there is a casting down, I know God will save. And there will be a lifting up. When I am down, I know God will save. And I will rise again. This is the reward that the father gave to Jesus. Who died, he gave him the name unto me, the name for me. Just like his birth was for me, his death was for me, his resurrection was for me. This reward is for me. Jesus is for me. Jesus is to heal me. It's not to heal him. Jesus is to deliver me. It means in every situation, when you are saved, it's a reward unto Jesus for his suffering. The reason why the father will not stop saving and will not stop healing because the father will not stop rewarding the son. God expects cancer to be healed because it's a reward to the son. God expects the dead to rise because it's a reward to the son. God expects powers of darkness to be broken at the name of Jesus. Why? That is how the father chose to reward the son. Therefore, every time somebody is healed in the name of Jesus, is the reward that the father has given him. Your salvation, every forgiveness is a reward to the son. Because he died your death, it is his reward that when you believe in him, you are forgiven. When you believe in him, you are restored. When you believe in him, you are healed. When you believe in him, you are delivered. When you believe, why? God will always be in the business of deliverance. And Jesus is the revelation that you are delivered. Rise to your feet. I don't know whether you are able to get that. It's a little bit deep, right? It's a little bit deep. Which is why I tell you to rise early and pray before you come. Because you need revelation in your spirit to capture this kind of depth of mystery. Glory to God. So the resurrection... And the exaltation of Jesus is the reward that the Father gave to the Son who became flesh for my sake. And as a token for me of that exaltation and glorification, the Father gave a name that was given before his birth. The Father regave, you know, regiving, regiving again what was given at when he was he had not yet taken flesh. You will give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. Why? He will save his people. He will deliver. And at his birth, the scripture said, they gave him a name which the angel had announced in the dream. It means second time, in case you didn't pay attention to the first one, second time, God will save you. In case you forget, in case you had some wrong teaching, in case ancestral spirit came and lied to you, in case your circumstances have blinded you, in case you are feeling the pain and you don't know what God does, just know this second time that God will save if you believe. Then when the father raised him up and exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name that in the name of Jesus it means it is done therefore in every age Jesus will be glorified in every age Jesus will be exalted in every age the sick will be healed in the name of Jesus and that is the glory in every age the barren will have children in the name of Jesus and that is the reward Every time there is salvation, the reward is shown. Even now, the reward is coming to your life in forgiveness. Lift up your two hands. I don't care what you have done. It does not matter what you did not do. It is by the reward to the name of Jesus. It is the reward that the Father has given to the Son who died, that every sinner who comes to him, that every sinner that believes in him, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. If right now you believe in him, if right now you confess him, if you right now you submit to him, if right now you accept him, if right now no matter what you have done, how many people you have killed how many banks and, and lives you have robbed no matter how many people you have slaughtered in court no matter how many places you have desecrated in the marine power no matter how many people you have bewitched in witchcraft no matter 
the holy places you have desecrated, he will save. It is the reward of the Father to the Son. There will never come a day that Jesus will not save. There will never come a day that Jesus will not hear. Even now, he's saving somebody. If you just turn to him and accept him and confess him and turn from your sin, your sins are forgiven. And turn to him and confess your weakness. Your weakness are taken away. He is the Lamb of God that was revealed. Who takes away the sins of the world is the lamb that had been slain from the foundation of the world he is the king that will come again even today he has come he has come with the reward the crown on his head is your healing the crown on his head is your deliverance that is the crown the father has given him he didn't need crown because he had been the crown of the angels he had been the glory of the ages but the father crowned him he crowned him with your healing he crowned him with your deliverance he crowned him with your transformation he crowned him with your release he crowned him with his, your prosperity so your prosperity is the crown that he carries it is the reward the father has given to him therefore in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The reward that has been given to Jesus is the glory of the Father. That means the Father is glorified when you are healed. The Father is glorified when you are lifted. The Father is glorified when you prosper because it is the reward he gave to the Son. And the reward he gave to the Son is unto his glory. The Father is glorified when you are changed. When you are transformed, the Father is glorified. When you experience honor, when you come back to health, when you come back to strength, when you come back to power, when you come back to prosperity, it is to the glory of the Father that you escape destruction. It is to the glory of the Father that wombs are open and children are given. It is to the glory of the Father that the lost is found and the diabetic is restored. It is to the glory of the Father that what had been buried has come back to life and the enemy is afraid. It is to the glory of the Father that that man yet prosper in all things, even as your soul prospered. It is to the glory of the Father that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. It is to the glory of the Father that you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of the beloved where you have redemption, even the forgiveness of sin. It is to the glory of the Father that all things pertaining to life and godliness have been granted you by the knowledge. It is to the glory of the Father that you rise again, that you sing again, that you testify again it is to the glory of the father you are lighted again and you walk in light again it is to the glory of the father say my salvation is to the glory of God. so next time you pray don't pray like the father is against you it is just like it's to the glory of the father that you bear much fruit glory glory you know, sometimes when we pray to the Father, we just pray like grudgingly, will he even answer me? Every time you are answered and you testify, it's to the glory of the Father. Why? That is the reward that the Father wanted the Son to have. And the reward of the Son is that every knee shall bow. And when knees are bowed, you have testimony. And the Father is glorified. Glory to God. You want to clap? Go ahead and clap.